welcome to lecture number two. And today's topic, we're going to discuss about uh, introduction to React Native. So our goal for this particular session is to understand React Native ecosystem. So how does uh, React Native works? Also to configure development environment for React Native and also to launch a basic React Native application. So uh, this is our objective for this particular topic and uh, let's start with our discussion. So let's talk about first React Native. So in our previous lecture, we have uh, talked about um, mobile application frameworks and one of the cross-platform frameworks that uh, we have identified was React Native. So React Native is an open source UI software framework designed for uh, building apps on multiple platforms like iOS and Android. And it is uh, basically maintained and created by Meta platforms or uh, Facebook. So the same um, company who have started create, creating um, uh, React JS, no? And they were they are also the same company who maintained it. And uh, in 2015, no, uh, they were able to launch React Native. Basically, React Native is based on React JS, although not literally everything is the same. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background, React JS is a JavaScript library uh, for building user interfaces. So it's uh, when you say building user interfaces, it just simply means that it's for front end development, no. Uh, but instead of targeting the browser in in no way in React Native, it now uh, targets mobile platforms. So again, Facebook released React Native in 2015 and has been maintaining it ever since. If you want to look into the first uh, time it was launched, I have pasted it here on the link. Now you can just watch it on YouTube on on the day that they have announced uh, React Native. Uh, it's a good video as well because it ex they explain it there. On what will what are the reasons that they made uh, React Native? No. So basically, that is the background of what React Native is. So to sum it up, uh, React Native is a front-end framework or a UI-based framework. So meaning to say, you use React Native to create uh, applications for the front-end. No. Uh, you are concerned with how to um, organize the layout. How do you put contents? How do you add events? No, so those are the things that you worry about when you are going to work with uh, React Native. So furthermore, uh, React Native in 2018 is considered as the second highest number of contributors for any repository. And I guess as of this late, as I checked it yesterday, they were fifth uh, on the list. And um, so this means that they are very popular, no? Uh, the or the, the the project is very popular. That uh, there are so many people who are interested and have contributed to the development of this uh, project. Sige, let's post mo na mena na wag. Hello, Mam Ma Joy. Hi, Mam. Ma Kadit lang. <laughs> Ako sa init. Excuse, guys, ha.
Okay, so let's continue. So there are here are some of the popular apps uh, that was created using React Native. So here we can identify some popular brands. No, uh, we can see here Facebook, of course, because uh, this was made by Facebook. We have Messenger. Uh, we have here some uh, some recognizable uh, brands like uh, Microsoft Teams. We have Xbox, no Skype. No. Uh, what does this mean if you are a developer and uh, this was showcased to you? It means that this um, framework uh, is production ready. No? That is something that we can conclude upon seeing this. Uh, the purpose of perhaps of React Native on showing or showcasing these apps is just to showcase also to those who want to use the app or the, the framework to um can i say um to showcase not so to showcase or to show that you can use react native and create an app that is production ready now production ready because in in some sense there are popular brands who are uh using it already now actually there are so many brands that is already uh, using react native in their uh, in the mobile app, no Tesla is using React Native. So as a developer, guys, it's also um a good indicator that the framework itself is stable and very popular. So when it is popular, then there is demand. No, uh, that is something that we want as a developer that there is a demand for this particular tool, and it means that there are jobs that are uh readily available for us. No, if we are going to invest our time in learning React Native. So I presume that um, this is something that would interest your time no, in learning because uh, there is a demand on this and there will be a high likelihood that you will be hired for a position as a React Native mobile developer. So my question also is why React Native? So I just don't want to dictate in the class na, okay, I'm gonna use React Native and you don't have other choices but to follow my lead. So in this manner, we will examine why do we need or why did we choose React Native among all of those available cross-platform frameworks? Because you might also argue, why not Flutter, sir? The other section is uh, using Flutter. Um, the other class is using Flutter. The other school is using Flutter. They're also using Native, sir. Why, why do we need to use React Native? So let's justify and let's examine uh, why do we need to use React Native and what is with React Native that we can uh, take advantage of. So here are some re reasons why do we need React Native. So one reason is that React Native provides a native experience using web technology. So it means that whenever you are developing an app, uh, on, on the previous attempt of um, maximizing web stack, to develop mobile application. Um, what they have accomplished was the use of web viewer, meaning to say web viewer uh, is a built-in module in uh, any mobile application platform. And what it does is uh, primarily create a web view where we can create a web app that will feel uh, or no, that would look like a mobile application, but it won't feel uh native as it is so, so with react native although we are gonna utilize the use of web stack or web technology we can create an app that would feel in uh look like no it will feel like a native application and it also look like a native application that you cannot distinguish between an, a real native application and uh for ex a web application or a web uh, based um stack of our uh, page no so uh, that is what react native is offering no uh, the comfort of utilizing your existing um, knowledge about uh, software development using web technology so from that comfort no that you can translate that into mobile development as well so that's what react native is all about and this is i guess what's the difference between uh, flutter no, because with Flutter, although it's cross-platform, but the idea here is that you will learn another uh, set of skills by uh, an, uh, learning Dart, J, uh, Dart programming. No, So meaning to say, uh, instead of utilizing what you already have, you need to learn another set of technology. 
no or another set of technology stack no so that's uh, i guess what's good with react native because from web technology from react js knowledge you can translate that into mobile application development and even well, uh, as of this late they have incorporated react windows no or react native windows which will allow you to develop a desktop application using react native then the most obvious uh, why do we need to use react native is cross platform development so the idea of cross platform development um as what i have uh, mentioned in the previous lecture it allows us to kind of save time and cost in the development of our application because with cross platform instead of um learning uh, two stack of technology where is android and ios you only need to learn one technology that you can deploy in both platforms and another thing is that uh with with cross platform development it um allows you to be flexible no flexible with uh with your skills no na aside from uh learning to create android apps you can also translate that code that can be used to both uh, ios and even desktop application and for any of you who have not known uh i would like to also uh, give you some tips no if ever you are going to kind of learn a new language or a new framework it's always important that it should have an active and large community of developers the reason because uh, it will be hard for you to work on a framework or any system that you don't have anyone that you could ask if ever you will have an error so that's the the good thing with active and large community of developers because you can post questions on stack overflow and you can expect that there will be many who can answer those troubles that you will experience this is especially um important if you are a a beginner no if you are start just starting to learn a new framework no um this is really a huge learning curve for sure if for example, you're learning a new stack of technology and then you don't have any mentor that you can ask about it, no, or you don't even have a community where you can go and uh, ask questions. So that, that the keyword here is someone that you could ask whenever you are going to be stuck no, during the development process. So this is the reason why React Native. You might ask me, sir, uh, how about the other framework? Doesn't uh, don't, don't they have a large community as well? I would say yes, they, they have a large community. Um, the only thing that I have uh, seen for sure in, in when whenever I when uh, during the time that I was able to uh, scour the internet about what would be the best uh, mobile framework for beginners, uh, it's just that we can see that React Native is the most recommended no uh, framework no especially because uh, if it's because of its uh, advantage that um if you are a, a beginning uh, if you are a knowledge about html css and javascript that you can basically translate that as well to um, mobile application so uh, i i guess na in terms of large community also react is the largest among all of the communities flutter is still a new um new framework although there is also a large community of it since it's funded by google but uh, of course react native is not far from it because it's also funded by facebook it means there are also a large backing of um large company na it, it means that this kind of technology stuff is going to last for a long time no because there is really this problem or dilemma about um shall we call it open source projects no react native is an open source project and the problem with open source project is that whenever uh, a huge backer or a company that is backing that particular framework stops supporting it um, then it will just die down and uh, all of the things that you have tried to learn will be wasted so this is true with code igniter if you have heard about it it's a web framework for php uh, during my uh, college days that was the most uh, popular framework for php that we have used but since the company who have created it and maintained it for a while uh, quits on maintaining it then uh, the community died down and there goes the popularity is out and no one is hiring anymore on code igniter so that's also one of the concern no and that is why react native is still on a very stable course and 
there are still many companies who, who is hiring for this skill set. And as what I have told you a while ago, there is already a showcase of uh, several or multiple apps, no, that uh we have, I uh, no? we have uh seen a while ago, no, wherein Facebook. Tesla and a lot of major companies have already used it for the production ready application. So this also means that uh whenever you are going to use React Native, the the one one benefit is that you can make you can uh, it is rest assured that whatever you can create out from it is production ready. No and minim medyo minimal lang ang bug. But of course that depends on the developer. No and React Native is cost effective as what I have presented on the previous matrix, uh, if you look at the lecture one, then you'll see that React Native as a cross-platform is, uh, aside from its cost effective, it's also time efficient. No? And another is uh, it, it doesn't lag behind from the native code no, where its performance is going to, um, shall we call it, uh, slow down no? uh, because um, React, Nat uh, React Native or cross platforms typically also performs closer to what a, uh, what a native stack or what a native application is. And I got this uh, tagline from React Native, no? what they have always uh, presented, even in their website, if you look at it, uh, their tagline is learn once, write anywhere. So what does this imply? Um, it, Im it means that uh, when you learn React Native, then you can uh you can be able to write any platform no so say for example if you learn react native you can uh write an application for desktop for mobile and even for web no you can also use react native for web although react js is i guess the most appropriate approach if you're going to write uh, or use react technology for uh web uh web development no so if the, this part doesn't convince you, then I hope you could research more on React so that uh, you will understand uh, the why is it that it's why is it that React Native is one of those popular uh, frameworks in mobile application development. No, so I hope you won't just uh, stop from what I have said. No, and and believe everything what I see here. I hope you will also find in yourselves to search online and look for evidences to justify what what really makes React Native something worthwhile of your time. No, that not you can invest your time, you can learn on it, and perhaps later on learn a job for uh, with your React Native skills. So, how does React Native works? So, I have here a diagram which reflects how does or under the hood, no, on how React native works no um basically the keyword or the key thing about react native uh functioning like an actual native uh native natively developed application is because of its uh react native bridge so uh same as the name implies no uh, the bridge um works as uh, an intermediary between our javascript code into uh, we call it native uh, code, no? So as it is presented in this diagram, um, our application is written in JavaScript, no? Wherein it, this JavaScript code is uh, utilizing we call it component-based uh, development. Wherein from here, we can safely say na all of our UI components is uh, built like a tree. No, that's why we call it component tree. Later on, when we head to React Native core concepts, which is I have already also prepared, you will find uh, uh, these components are the UI components that is going to be translated no, from this JS thread, thread to the bridge. And then from the bridge, it will then be um, transcoded, uh, transcoded to uh, platform-specific um, native code. No? Uh, another thing also is that uh, web application or web technology supposedly doesn't have an access to the smart devices hardware. So say, for example, a certain web application cannot or does not have access to sensors, to Bluetooth, no, or whatever uh, hardware that you have on your smartphone. But with the use of the bridge, 
uh, our React Native code can interact with this uh, platform-specific code, no? which enables us to create an app that uh, is capable of um, working with the platform-specific uh, APIs. No? So later on, when we get to work with hardware-specific hardware, hardware -specific coding, um, you'll learn how to access camera, how to access network, how to access the uh, GPS no? in order for you to create application that will need those kinds of hardware. For example, if you want to create a mapping application, then uh, the question to that is how do we make a, a JavaScript-based code and access the API or the hardware from uh, a certain platform like Android. No? So uh, under the hood, this is how React Native works. So it's just like you're writing on a different platform and there is someone in between that will kind of interpret or translate our code into platform-specific code. So that makes it um, way, way more faster no? in, compared to a uh, browser-based na uh, application. No? And one thing also is good with this is that as you notice, here in the platform OS, we have access now to events and canvas. And this means that uh, since Koan Mangod, since web is limited to only click and tap and scroll events, uh, with the use of React Native Bridge, we will be able to access um, smartphone gestures like swipe, no? uh, swipe, uh, even the um, accelerometer, no? the shake, no shake actions no so these events are not really accessible using web technology and with the use of react native bridge you will be able to access this technology and that also means that you can create an an app that feels and looks like a native application no so that's uh, how react native works in addition by the way uh, to that let me show you a video i hope that this will be audible no so let me show you a play a video na uh, that would somehow give you a an idea or an an idea or a nutshell overview of uh, what React Native is. React Native write JavaScript and React to build apps for iOS, Android, and the web from a single code base. According to Atwood's law, any application that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. The first way JS developers tried to build mobile apps was by wrapping their native applications in a sandbox browser called a WebView, using tools like Apache Cordova and Adobe PhoneGap. The philosophy is write once, run anywhere. This works, but it can be hard to make a website feel like a true native experience. React Native takes a different approach. It feels just like React DOM for the web, but instead of using HTML and the DOM as building blocks for the UI, it uses the native components that you would find on iOS and Android. The philosophy is learn once, write anywhere. You can't just take your existing React web app and upload it to the App Store, but you can use the React skills you already have to build a native app without ever having to touch Java or Objective-C. Instead, you import building block components like button, switch, scroll view, and the most fundamental of which is view. At runtime, it will use the true native component on the corresponding platform, like UIView, Android.View, or Div on the web. It's like building three apps for the price of one, but in some cases, you may want a different visual experience based on the underlying OS. The platform module allows you to check which platform you're on and render different components accordingly. When it comes to visuals, there's no CSS in React Native. Instead, every core component takes a style prop that can be customized with a style sheet constructed from JavaScript. In development, it supports fast refresh, which means you can instantly see the changes you make to your code on any platform. You may also want to tap into native features like the device camera, push notifications, and geolocation. These concerns are handled by one of the most active open source communities on GitHub. There's open source packages for almost everything that can be installed with NPM just like any other JavaScript project. And there's frameworks like Expo that build on top of React Native primitives to provide all the tooling required to ship your app to production. You can use React Native to build a complete mobile app or integrate it with existing iOS and Android projects. It's not an all or nothing solution. This has been React Native in 100 seconds. If you want to see more short videos like this, hit the like button and subscribe. And let me know if you want to see more React Native content in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, now, so now that we have understand what React Native is, now as an overview of what it is all about, now we will proceed to how do we set up React Native? So I have uh, given you this task already on the laboratory, but 
But the purpose of recording and uh, reference later on for those people who have not yet done it on their own computer. So I'm, I'm just going to demonstrate right now how to uh, set up React Native. And there are two ways to set up React Native. First is to use Expo Go. No? Uh, you have done this a while uh, already in the laboratory. And also to uh, how do we set up uh, React Native CLI. No. So this one, it would take a little bit while, but I will demonstrate both of this um, setup. Okay. So to start with, uh, I'd like now to navigate to the desktop and uh, kind of show you how to set things up with React Native. So the first thing we'll have to do is to visit reactnative.dev. So reactnative.dev is where you can find all the documentations necessary for you to understand uh, what React Native is. You don't actually need to wait for me. No, you can just go here. As a developer, guys, it's always a good habit no, to kind of go to the actual documentation of the framework and read everything inside of it so that you can get a first-hand knowledge no, from the framework itself. So to start with React Native, you can just go to reactnative.dev and then just click get started and from this point you are going to be instructed on how to set up react native the most quickest way of setting up react native is for us to use expo go and uh, for that we need to have these following dependencies so we can either use yarn if you have yarn as your uh, uh, call it package manager or you can also use NPM. In my case, I have NPM on my end. So if you don't have any NPM, NPM you can go to Node.js. Node.js. So from here, you can download either the current or the LTS. No? So it's up to you what you want. But based on documentation, the recommended is the LTS no? uh, here. No? LTS ang recommended. But for me, uh, you can basically check if you have Node on your machine by opening the CLI, typing Node-B. And from here, I have uh, the current fe current feature of Node uh, installed. No? And uh, the next thing you can do, since um, Expo Go is, um, call it, a CLI-based application, we'll have to, or I have to, uh, create this project first, no? And to do that, again, I need a CLI. So I'm just gonna navigate to the projects so that I can uh, basically mean, uh, kind of organize this. So I have to put it in this project folder, copy this one. I'm just gonna con uh, change directory and go to this one. So it's up to you on where you want to save your project. No, but in my case, I want it to be saved in this folder. Then the next thing you can do is uh, you can copy this command. Copy that one. You can paste it here by right-clicking. Uh, NPX, create Expo app. And then from here, you can also set the name of your app. So I'm going to call this app uh, to-do app. No, To-do app. I'm just going to use camel case no, to do app and then hit enter. And for this, uh, it's, it's going to take a while. Uh, it will install or download the associated package that we need for this project. So we'll have to kind of wait for it to be executed. Now, there will be instances that there are going to be errors that will pop up. Uh, one of that error could be... Um, the missing npm from a roaming folder so you can just go to that directory and create an npm uh, i i i have or we have encountered that last meeting no i i remember sila ni mr cabarubias have that problem uh so ayan so if you have that uh, issue with regards to yes Kali ko mute. Uh, possible kung kuhan kaya record ng tani. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So now it's installing the ano the application. 
Okay, and to demonstrate this, I have here an application that will allow me to show what I have in my mobile phone. Basically, I'm going to launch this uh, application on my uh, mobile phone. No? So and to do that, I'm going to use Visor. So you can also use Visor if you want. So Visor, and this is the app no, that you can use. I'm going to open Visor. And then upon opening Visor, on your phone, you'll just have to you'll just have to enable the USB debugging mode, no? If you know that already, uh you should enable your USB debugging mode on your phone. You can go to your phone and then tap on the uh like later on, I'm gonna show you on my end no how it's done. I'm just gonna open now the developer's option. And I'm gonna turn turn on the debugging option. Okay. So what will allow me to view my device is through visor. So okay. So I have now visor. So I can now view my device. And you go. And so this is a live device, no? This is now my device. I will now place it somewhere here. Uh, let me position it here. Okay. So I have here on my device, you can turn on your USB debugging by enabling your developer mode. So you can enable your developer mode typically by tapping this uh, version, depending on sa inyo on sa inyong gamit, no? So in my case, I have to tap this one. So kung kabalo mo enable, you can just search. No, I am already a developer right now. So I can now go to additional settings and then I can also then go to developer options. And from developer options, you can enable your USB debugging. This is actually a requirement if you are going to set up for React Native CLI and want to launch your uh, application via ADB or Android device, uh, device bridge. You know? So the next thing that we will do is, uh, as I've demonstrated last time, you need to uh, install Expo Go. So if you haven't, you need to go to Play Store and search for Expo uh, Expo Go and uh, X now uh, Expo Go Expo Go and then uh, from here you can install Expo Go no. And you can install it and then open that application. And from here, you can you can either enter a URL or you can also scan by a QR. So in our case, in order for us to make use of the Expo Go, let me uh, start the application. Uh, this is uh, the application I, we have created using uh, Expo. So in Expo, guys, you don't need to configure a lot of things. You just need in uh, NPM or Node.js, no? So from here, we can see that we need to go to CD to do app. And instead of just running it right away, I'm going to open it uh, by this shortcut to open it in a VS Code. And then right here, we can see that there is a scaffold no, um, of files, no? Uh, most... Oh, uh, basically, we have the node modules. Then we also have these default assets, no? the icons, the splash icons. And then one, most importantly, we have this app.js. No? This is the entry file for our application if ever we're going to run it. No? So this is the app.js. So all of our coding later on will focus on how to set up app.js and also other components. So there are also settings that we could adjust, but perhaps that will be later on once we get to styling. No, So for now, let's focus muna on this one. Now uh, we can go back to our CLI. And then from here, we can go NPM start. And then this will build our application. 
Uh, as uh, what I have mentioned also, uh, Expo is uh, reliant on internet. No? So in, if you are going to um, use Expo as your ways and means to uh, start a React Native application, then you'll have to have an internet. No, because it is uh, reliant on an internet because uh, our code right here is going to be uploaded to an external server wherein that server is then accessible via the app. And here we can um, basically uh, try and uh, make use of the app. Now we can test our app here. So let's go back to our CLI. And right now it's trying to build our uh, application. So sir, Metro, me, yes. Sir, kanang, no kay question, sir, baka nang, di ba, sir, kay mag-install man tawag atong NPM, sir, kung ma-NPX, sir, if mag-deploy tawag atong mga files para makaran tawag mobile app, di ba, sir? What if, sir, baka nang, kung mag-imo bito kag new na application, sir, mag-NPM mag na po doon ka outro, sir? Yes. Kanang, like, mag-create kag bagong project, sir, ba? Ano ba ito, sir? Yes, yes, mag-NPM ka outro. Ah, okay, sir, thank you, sir, thank you, sir. So right here, we have the Metro uh, bundled our application. So just to give you an idea how it's how it's going to work, when you run in PEM start, uh, a bundler will wrap up all of our code right here. It wrapped up and make it into one single code base. And then uh, that code is then going to be deployed uh, in Expo server. This, uh, this uh, URL here is something that you could enter right here sa uh, kaning URL. No? Dere, pwede niyo siya mag-enter ka o um, kanang URL dere. No? Uh, but of course, there's an easy way. You can use the QR scanning para mas scanning mo nga QR. Now, there are options here na you, you can uh, use. If ever you want to see all of the commands, you can just type question mark and then everything is then displayed on sa mga options available for Expo. And then you can press C para makita ni mo imong QR or you can also press uh, O or whatever that is that you'd like to do. No? You can even also press A to deploy it to an Android uh, device. But for now, let's try and deploy it on a QR code. No? So I have here my phone. I'm going to use scan QR. And from here, I'm going to scan the QR code. And then it is now launched in the phone. No, nanagid siya directly on my phone. Now, let's go back to our code. So it will take us a while, maybe especially if you are going to have a small, a slow internet connection. So it, something went wrong. You can just reload. Let me check. Uh, let me connect it. Okay, I have this issue because... Somehow, it needs to have the same uh, IP address. I was wrong last time when I said na it doesn't need to have the same IP address. It needs to have the same IP address. No? Uh, I guess it's for security reason. Uh, so now we have our app launch. No? It's now sending us this uh, bundling process. No? And it's also reflected in the mobile phone. that It's bundling our application. So and so you just have to refresh. Um, basically now I am connected at the same Wi-Fi as my laptop. So let me wait for a while. It is taking a little bit of time. Okay. So I am. So now it's now bundled. As you can see, there is a splash screen already. And what we're seeing now on screen is the view no? that is default to the um, to this um, uh, UI right now. No? So this is the default view. We can simply edit this one. So I should notice it's uh, doing hot reload, meaning at the time I, I press save, it's already updating here now on Expo Go. Um, there are also some basic later on that we're going to discuss. For example, what is um, component? No? 
how do we create components? Um, what are the view components, text component, and what is this status bar that we have right here? And then uh, from here, we can also see that there is this familiar code of uh, using style sheet. Now we can basically create another style sheet style here. Um, you should also notice that it's using a key and value pair like a JSON data. Ang iyang paggamit sa styling. Although it's available as CSS, but notice na it's using camel case instead of, uh, say, for example, doing this sa typical nga CSS. So this will cause an error, no? And uh, this is not allowed in React Native because you'll have to make it na into a key and value pair. And key doesn't take dash, no? You need to convert it to a camel case uh, styling. Let's try and add, let's say, text color or color red. So as you notice, it's uh, following a key and value pair standard. And then from here, we can apply CSS styling. For example, for the color of the text, we can apply something like red. And since it's in JSON format, no, uh, I hope you can recap your JSON data format. We need to access this value like an object. So for example, since this is now the object that we have created out from the style sheet component from React Native, we can then, for example, apply it here that by using the style props and we do styles that color red. So now we have this color red right now. We can even add font in the, instead of font size like this, we need to have it in a camel case, let's say 100. or 80. So we can basically now manipulate what we can display on the screen. Now, uh, a little bit also of kanang heads up is that this doesn't allow us to use C, uh, HTML tag, although it's also using GSX. Uh, this will be explained further in lesson three. Um, it doesn't actually allow us to use div. One in particular is that div is not recognized. no, And uh, let me try and show you. So div. So meaning, HTML, JSX are not acceptable for React Native. No, uh, there is what we call a specific component for each of these JSX uh, code that we'll have. So we, this will be explained in our future lecture. But this is how we launch our app with Expo. No. And uh, we were able to edit this app.js. And next meeting, we will be creating more components. And also, we are on the next lecture. No? Now, let's proceed to the other way of setting up React Native, the React Native CLI uh, way. So the thing that you'll have to set up first is to select what will be your operating system. If it's uh, Mac OS, then choose Mac OS. If it's Windows, then choose Windows. As you notice, uh, Windows cannot build iOS. Mac OS, however, on the other hand, can build both. So this is why I am saying that Mac OS really is an advantage for developers. Why? Because it can build both Android and uh, iOS. No? Whereas in Windows, you can only build Android and you cannot build iOS. Okay? So with that in mind, uh, what are the dependencies? So you can copy and paste this command on your CLI and install Node.js no? uh, on, uh, on your system. And then um, if you are done downloading Node.js and also the GDK, then you'll have to set up the Android development environment. And setting up Android development environment, you need to have the Android Studio no? for it to be, just to make it sure that it's easier. So you can download Android Studio. Uh, Android Studio. And then right here, we can download Android Studio. So in Android Studio, you can download the Giraffe, uh, the latest version, the Giraffe version. And in my case, I have already downloaded it. Uh, there are no specific setup that, that you'll have to do in during installation. You can just... Um, uh, copy and uh, you can just install this one and then I'm just gonna close this. Okay, 
So this is my installed version of Android Studio. So this is uh, going to be Android Studio Giraffe, no? So from here, uh, it's there are setups that you'll need to do after you have installed Android Studio. First, you need to download the SDK, the SDK platform, the virtual device, and also enable the Hyper-V on your operating system. So there are guides also for that, no? But it's simple, no? Now not only Android SDK. So once you have this Android Studio, you don't need to create a new project, ha? Huh? You don't even need to open anything, no? You can just go directly to More Actions and then go to SDK Manager. So from SDK Manager, you can then uh, see here that there are SDK platforms that you can download. Now, the SDK platforms uh, is a required prerequisite or dependency for your build for un for React Native CLI. In my case, I have already downloaded Tiramisu because on my settings, the Android version that I am using right now is Android 13. No? I'm using Android 13, so it means I need to download Tiramisu. Now, this is relevant to the device that you are going to use for your testing. So check on your device version, Android version, and download the uh, correct uh, version nah, for that. So in my case, I have installed Tiramisu. And then uh, the rest is you can also install whatever you'll need. No? And then the next thing is uh, also download the Android API 34. No? And... Privacy Sandbox, so you can download that one. So let me show you how to download. You just check the box and then click Apply. And then just read on what the important things right here and then hit OK. And then this will be the installer, no, which will install uh, the one that we have checked. Okay. So once it's done, then it will just... Uh, allow us to uh, put it even on the background. No? Pwede rin nato iputang sa background. Then go here in the SDK tools and aside from platforms, no, we need again the SDK tools as, as so it was listed here. Then from here, you need to download the build tools, the NDK, the SDK command line tools. If you want Android emulators, you may also do that. But the important thing here is download uh, the hypervisor driver, the SDK platform tools, the SDK command line, the NDK, and the SDK build tools. You can also download the uh, HAXM, but this was already installed upon installation of Giraffe, so you don't need to do anything. And for SDK updates, uh, just uh, check if there's necessary for us to check or add a new SDK update. No, but for now there are no need for us to do that. So, so that is the setup for our uh, SDK. As you notice, we need to set up SDK, the platform. Now, Android virtual device or the ABD is optional. No? So we can then close this. So if you want, if or if your laptop can run an ABD, then you can go to more actions and virtual device manager. And from here, you can create what we call an emulator. No? But warning, um, Creating an emulator or running an emulator on a device really consumes a lot of hardware resources. So if you have uh, an 8 gig RAM and below, then it's not really recommended. No, That's why uh, you can attach your phone directly to your laptop by enabling USB debugging. So if this doesn't really uh, concerns you, then uh, you don't need to, to, to create a device. But here you can create a device and then select on what type and then uh, also the version and you, you can even create a new profile for hardware for example for uh, Samsung no kay wala may Samsung dire nga device it's all uh, Google owned nga device no you can even also import uh, and what else so you can see here that there is the screen size and also the the density no so here you can click next and then create your uh, virtual device so that this virtual device can then be run Pwede nimo i-run para magamit nimo instead of using uh, in my case visor and connecting my phone you can just run entirely everything on the operating system. So once you're done with Android Studio, you don't need anything out from it, you can just simply close it, no? And then again, you can enable your Hyper-V by searching it on your operating system, enable 
hyper B or uh, enable features. So you can search for features now, enable features, and then you can click on it. And this will be open no, on, on your operating system. You'll need to find the uh, Hyper B right here if there's an option for Hyper B by sorry, this one. You have to check it and then click OK. And then one thing you can do is it will restart your operating system. No, So you just have to restart it. So that's how you can set up for uh, setup one. For part two, yeah, we have already, I've already shown you how to set up the SDK manager, no, and also the build tools. Next is you can you need to in configure Android Home. Uh, in order for us to do it, we need to find it on environment variables, and from here you uh, you have search. So what I did is I already I just search environment variables, and then from here you can go environment variables. In my case, uh, I put it on a system variable and add here Android Home. How do you add? You can just hit new. Okay. So here you can add Android Home. And then paste where your uh, Java GDK is located, uh, SDK is located. So there is an instruction here where you can copy and paste this one to locate your Android SDK. Uh, go into your Windows Explorer, paste it right there, and it will navigate you to where your SDK is. And then copy that link and then paste that on your Android home. So I'm not going to proceed on this because as, you've, as you have seen here, I have already my uh, I have already set up my Android Home now. So this is the, the way to do that. Then hit OK, and then this will be the value. Next will be to proceed with uh, checking if you have already the Android Home. You can copy and paste this command, open Windows PowerShell, and then just paste it there. No? And then paste it there, and then hit Enter. And then you need to check if you have already the Android Home. In my case, Android Home is already located. So this means that I have already successfully set up my Android Home. Next is to add the platform tools. Uh, same thing, you need to open the environment variables. But instead of adding Android Home, you search for the path variable and then edit. No? And then right here, I ha uh, you have to add by clicking New. No, and then you'll need to locate the one that you want to add the directory. In my case, the platform. And so, uh, what I'll do is same process. I'm gonna copy and paste this one. Go to Windows Explorer, paste it there, and then from here you can just copy this one, copy, and then go back here, and then edit path, and then new path, then paste it right there. Now paste it, paste the path right there. No, uh, but in my case again, it's already been added, so. So that's how simple it, it is, no? Then once you're done, no, sometimes it maybe requires restore, uh, restart, but if it doesn't require you to restart, then that's fine. Then proceed to our next command, which is to create a new project, you know? So if you can, uh, if you have an old installation, you can uninstall by using this, but since we don't have any yet, so we can copy this command. And same, I'm just gonna stop this one, by the way. And same folder, I'm gonna paste that command. So it's npx react native at latest. So it's important to add at latest so that we will download the latest package. Or you can also specify the version. No? But for us to be safe, now we'll just use the latest package in it. And then we're gonna name this, um, call this, um, React or R native CLI. No? So just hit enter and it will download all the files. Now, there might be, again, errors that will be uh, discovered or encountered during this process. So please feel free to screenshot it and share it on the group. Now, somehow it takes really a lot of time for us to uh, finish this React native CLI. So let's just continue. So in using an Android device, you can connect your Android device, physical device, like what I'm doing right here. I'm using a physical device and connect it 
using your USB and then enable your USB debugging. No? And from here, it can be detected by your uh, by the environment or this one. Pwede na siya mag uh, detect. Then pwede na rin ka mag run o kuman nga uh, NPM start which will target the device that you have or NPM run Android no? which will target the device na we have connected to our PC. And that's it.